You're finally in the capital city of Spain? Come on, this is the time to tick off all the things you've listed on your bucket list. And if you do not have an idea of how to have a good time while in Spain, you should stick around till the end of this video. We are about to go on a trip to Spain, and it promises to be fun. Number 10. Visit the Royal Palace of Madrid. This is the best place to start off your Madrid experience. The process of building and subsequent revamping of this place took a total of 18 years. It is the largest palace in Europe and ranks among the world's largest palaces, too. It stretches over 135,000 square meters and contains 3,418 rooms. You need to see the opulent furnishings of the inner part of the palace to fully understand why it is on this list. It is elegant and has a magnificent decor. You will thank the stars you visited. Number 9. Explore the Museo Geraldo. A rarely talked about gem, this museum is located next to the central Plaza de España. It was built for two purposes, to serve as a museum and also as a home. It is the headquarters of the works of art collected by the Marquis of Seralbo and his children. It was designed in a classical style and contains over 50,000 objects. Sculptures, paintings, ceramics, tapestries, coins, drawings, weapons, archaeological objects, stamps and armor are among what you'll find there. No way you won't have a good time here, but try going there early as capacity is limited. Number 8. Shop at Mercado San Miguel. The evolution of Mercado San Miguel has been a beautiful one to watch. Originally a wholesale goods market back in 1916, it has gradually risen to become one of the Spanish finest markets. It is located in the city center and is clad in cast iron architecture. You will find several different goods in the market, from fresh meat to seafood, down to pastries. Oh, it is also the last remaining iron market hall in Madrid. Now, why would you not visit such a place? Number seven, get a rush of adrenaline at the Naval Museum in need of some naval adventure? Then this is your best bet. It is situated close to the Prado Museum and visiting it will introduce you to model replicas of ships, originals, and paintings. I must inform you ahead of time though, the museum is quite big and you might spend about three hours walking around the entire museum. When you are done, you can grab some souvenirs from a small museum shop situated around the museum. Number six, visit Los Geronimos Step into the captivating world of Los Geronimos a 16th century Gothic Catholic church nestled in the heart of Madrid. This venerable institution bears witness to an extraordinary history, where it served as a sanctuary for kings and queens, hosted Spanish parliaments, witnessed royal weddings like that of Alfonso the Routined, and marked the proclamation of King Juan Carlos the Mers. Los Geronimos has gracefully evolved over time, transforming from its original role as a Hieronymite monastery. Today, it enchants visitors with its splendid sculptures, mesmerizing paintings, and intricate stained glass windows, offering a window into the past and an exquisite experience for all who enter its doors. A must visit, I promise you. Number five, drop by the Santiago Bernabeu Stadium. Real Madrid FC is one of the biggest football clubs in the world, and a visit to their famous stadium is one hell of a way to have a rush of adrenaline. Going through the player dugouts, home and away dressing rooms, and trophy room will do you a lot of good, I tell you. Being a club with lots of history and wins, of course, their trophy room is packed with trophies, many dating as far back as 1903. Do you want to see the individual trophies won by their players over the years, such as golden balls and golden gloves? There is also room for that. Football fan or not, Real Madrid fan or not, you shouldn't miss visiting the Santiago Bernabeu. Number four, dine at Plaza de Santa Ana. Plaza de Santa Ana stands out in the Barrio de las Letras where it is located. It is the best place to have lunch or dinner as it has many cafes, restaurants, and tapas bars. It is the favorite meeting point of many people in central Madrid and will generally give you a good time if you make time to visit. Number three, spend a day at Parque del Oeste. This is the place to go if you are in need of some quietness and natural beauty. It has beautiful gardens and a large number of beautiful trees and bushes. Visitors also have an area where they can relax and watch their kids play. Within the park, you'll find the ancient Egyptian temple, Temple de Debod, said to have been donated to Spain as a thank you gift for saving the Abu Simbel temples. Now, doesn't all of that excite you? 
Number two, go to the Church of St. Anthony of the German first and foremost. I need to warn you concerning this church. You might be deceived by its outward appearance and may even walk past it the first time. But its plain outward appearance is quite deceitful because the inside of it is extremely breathtaking. Once you arrive at the church, you'll need to pay two euros 50 cents, and only then will you receive some papers containing information about the church. One word describes the paintings you'll find within the church. Gorgeous. This place will blow your mind, that's a promise. Number one, cap it off with a visit to Faro de Moncloa. Your visit to Madrid can never be complete if you do not visit Faro de Moncloa. It is an observation deck that offers you the best views of the Madrid skyline. It stands a whopping 92 meters above the ground, and from the very top of it, you get to see iconic buildings such as the Sibeles Palace, the Royal Palace, the Telefonica Building on Gran Via, and the Cuatro Torres Business Area. That's not all. You also get to enjoy views of the parks and green spaces like El Retiro, Oeste, and Casa de Campo Parks, Monte del Pardo, and the Guadarrama National Park in the distance. By the way, you can also find out everything the capital has to offer with regard to entertainment and culture by visiting the deck as it houses one of the 11 tourist information points provided by the Madrid City Council. It is for all these that the deck receives a lot of tourists regularly. This is the best way to cap off your Madrid experience.